guys, welcome back for another furniture makeover. My name is Walesa from Alive Refurbish. This week I'm working on a mid-century modern radio cabinet for my 17-year-old son. We're gonna do a combination of bare wood and a bright color. So if you love bare wood finishes and bright colors, stick around for this week's makeover. This is a silver tone radio cabinet from Sears, Roebuck and Company. This piece goes back to the 1920s, 1950s. When I first saw it, I loved the petite size and the fact that the radio sounded incredible considering its age. Since my 17 year old is quite the record collector, I showed it to him. He has a mini turntable in his bedroom and I thought if he really likes it, who knows, maybe he'll want to keep it. So here we're removing the panel that holds the speakers in place, removing the screws that are holding it in, unplugging the cables, the fabric that's covering the speakers is getting removed. This allows us to really clean the piece inside out and just to have better access to all the little corners that I'll be sanding. As I'm removing the fabric, I'm seeing a lot of residue from the hot glue they used to keep it in place. So I'm scraping it using what has become one of my favorite tools of all times. To get it flat, that way I can clean it, apply new glue and new fabric over it. If you ever decide to work on a similar piece, my advice is clean it very carefully, especially around all the cables, making sure you don't damage them. It's also a good idea to take a video when you're taking things apart and removing cables. It can come in handy if in the future you forget where the cables used to go and how to put the piece back together. And just in case there is any grime here, I'm removing it, giving everything a good wipe with some soapy water. That way when I sand it to bare wood, I won't be pushing that grime into the wood grain and possibly contaminating my surface. Even though I had talked to my son about a couple of design ideas, I wasn't really sure how much was getting painted or how much of the wood grain was going to be left exposed. And because I wasn't sure, I just decided to sand it all of it down to bare wood and go from there. To be on the safe side, I always start sanding with 120 grit. If I see that the finish is too tough to get rid of, then I'll lower it to 100 or even 80. But most of the time I start at a 120, followed by 220 and finally at 320 grit. I want to thank all of you beautiful people who comment on the videos, who leave a thumbs up. Your support means a lot and it makes a huge difference. Just a quick reminder that I have added links to all the products that I'm using today and you can find them under the video description. My favorite cleaner after sanding the piece, if I'm going to leave the wood exposed, is these mineral spirits from Green MB. It's always a good idea to let the fumes from this product evaporate overnight, so I always wait until the next day to apply my top coat. But before the day ends, I'm gonna focus on the hardware. After scrubbing the original handles, they turned silver. So I applied a couple of coats of this spray paint from Rustolium. My apologies for forgetting to record that I also spray painted the tips on the legs. To create some visual interest on this piece, I wanted to paint a half circle on the door. And believe it or not, this arch arrived earlier in the day because I'm going to be using it for a different project. When I put it on top of the door, it fit perfectly. So I just went with it. That's what you call perfect timing. Here, I'm using clear shellac to prime the area that's going to be painted. And since my paint is a water-based product and the rest of the piece is going to get top coated with an oil-based top coat, 
I want to make sure that those two products don't get mixed up. The inside of the cabinet is also getting painted with the same color that I'm painting that half circle. I was both surprised and excited to see that my son chose this gorgeous color sangria from Lily Moon Paint. I applied three coats using my cut in edge zebra brush. Not only does this paint offer superior coverage and adhesion, but it's also zero VOC. Water-based and oil-based products can be applied over each other as long as you wait 72 hours of drying time between the application of both products. While my paint was drying, I started tracing my fabric to make sure I would cut it to size to fit the panel that was holding the speakers. However, after I cut the fabric and placed the panel back up to see how it would look against my paint color, I thought that this fabric was way too plain. So I ended up going to the store to buy a different fabric that had more of that retro feel. But basically I had to repeat these steps all over again after applying the hot glue here and placing the fabric on top of it, the plain one, I had to go back and remove it all out, <laughs> scrape it again and start over. A quick piece of advice when you're applying hot glue, I made a mistake of applying the glue on the entire panel and then I tried to put the fabric afterwards. By the time I placed the fabric, it had already dry. Instead, place your fabric in place first and fold one of the corners. Apply the glue, fold the fabric back down and put some pressure on it to make sure it sticks. I didn't realize that there was a little area where the veneer had come off, so I just used a little bit of stain to make it match the rest of the piece. I will be top coating the bare wood areas with my favorite oil top coat from General Finishes, Arm R Seal. The biggest thing about this product is that you have to steer as you are using. Otherwise, there are some components to this product that settle at the bottom. And if that happens, your finish won't look even. My favorite way to apply this product is using a clean old sock. I will be applying three thin coats. And even though the can says to wait 12 to 24 hours between coats, I find that if my coats are thin enough, I can wait six hours in between one coat and the next, if climate conditions are ideal. I also like to use a 320 grit to give my piece a light scuff sand between one coat and the next. There was a little bit of a green color to some parts of the wood, so I mixed a little bit of stain with the top coat and applied a couple of coats to those areas. It's time to put this cabinet back together. It was hard to record because we needed all of our four hands. My husband, he's my helper. It was a bit difficult to put the speaker panel back in place, but we finally got to figure it figured out and are you ready to see the final results? First, let's take a quick look at how this cabinet used to look. Do you guys want to know what my 17 year old said after seeing it all done? He said, mom, this piece is too cool and I'm never going to let it go. Whenever I move out, I want this piece to come with me. To which my husband and I reply, 
only if you promise that if you ever decide to get rid of it, that piece is coming back to us. To which he replied, you don't have to worry about that because I'm never gonna let this one go. That was the best compliment I could have gotten. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of today's makeover. with me what can i say i was really touched by my son's words i think he's the best compliment that i could ever gotten from my 17 year old team. don't forget that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture it doesn't matter how tough things get there's always hope for you i will see you guys for next week's makeover